Thank you all so much for coming to Genetic Alliance's annual awards dinner. The Art of Reporting Award 2010 for giving exceptional men, women, and children a voice and for your dedication to celebrating them. Thank you for this wonderful award and for all that you do on behalf of people with disabilities and special needs. Today we have the technology to screen for over 60 disorders, conditions at birth, when the baby is asymptomatic, and, it, and it intervene at that point to achieve positive outcomes, avoiding a lifetime of profound disabilities and in some cases, death. This capability needs to be embraced, expanded and made a part of our everyday lives in every state of the union, in much the same way as we ultimately did for Dr. Robert Guthrie's PKU blood spot test. The key to all of this is education. We need to talk about this in school systems, educate families and expand the body of knowledge for our pediatricians, family practitioners, OBGYNs, and nurses. And we need to dispel the myths surrounding this remarkable capability. And then we need to provide more education to deal with the issues of compliance, particularly when we are dealing with the use of nutritional supplements. The role of the genetic counselor needs to be expanded and embraced, and people need to understand the value of the emerging field of genomics and why genetic testing is so important. To accomplish this, we need a partnership between public health and the private sector, but a partnership that is respectful, responsible, and cares about, the, and, and cares about what each brings to the table. Of course, this will not happen overnight, but we should take time to let it begin now. And it is not a question anymore of economics. It's not a question of finance. It is, it is a challenge to our integrity and the moral obligation that we have to do the right thing. I may be wrong, but I believe it is, I believe today there is no major health problem facing us that will be solved by science, technology, or research alone acting independently but by a collaboration of public and private health systems. So the Genetic Alliance is to be congratulated for the title of this conference, Advancing Novel Partnerships. It is very appropriate and much needed. I have some comments that I want to share with you on the subject of leadership and integrity. As you know, there are many kinds of leaders, many styles, many approaches and traits, but the most important leadership trait, in my opinion, is to be a man or woman of character. And character may be defined as being selfless, having moral courage and integrity. Most leadership traits are gifts, either heredity, hereditary or God-given. Character, on the other hand, is a matter of choice. You choose to be a man or woman of character. Leaders are in the people business and the inspiration business, and anyone who seeks to lead others must first have the character to inspire. Good leaders never worry about who gets the credit. They only worry about getting the job done. For them, the concept of being a mission or mission oriented holds real meaning. Good leaders are never afraid to tell the emperor that he has no clothes. And most of all, good leaders, successful leaders, tell the truth in all things. And they don't worry about looking good because they're too busy about being good. But of all the moral and ethical guideposts that we have been brought up to recognize and value, the one that stands out for me above all the rest is integrity. Integrity, as I've been taught by, once again by the Good Sisters of Charity, stands for soundness of moral principle and character, uprightness, honesty, but there is more. Integrity is also an ideal, a goal to strive for. And in the business of journalism, which is the business of EP, 
It is a goal that can never be lost sight of. Compromise your integrity just once. Sacrifice it for some economic gain or political favor. Present only one side of the story at the expense of the other without research or facts, and you will find yourself with declining support for your publication and something much worse, a lack of faith from your readers, the people you serve, and those employees whom you seek to lead. Integrity in our business also means you report on the issues and facts objectively and fairly, and you do not take sides except in matters of great moral conscience and ethics as they relate to the audience that you serve. When we began this pilgrimage, we took the position that we believe all babies born in every state in this nation should be screened using state-of-the-art technology to identify for all known inborn errors of metabolism at birth so appropriate intervention can be taken. We rejected the notion that it was a state's rights issue because it made no sense. Why should a baby born in Massachusetts have the benefit of being screened for 59 conditions while a baby born in Texas was screened for only four? Albeit it is, it is better now today, um, and that is something that we should take pride in, but we have a long way to go. It's not a matter of cost. It's a matter of integrity. So I accept this award from the Genetic Alliance on behalf of everyone, that exceptional parent, and on behalf of all of those who came before me, who left their passion and conviction indelibly etched in my mind. I accept it with this one point in mind. We will continue to represent those who cannot represent themselves and we, we will continue to strive to earn the respect and trust you have placed in us, adhere, adhering always to our touchstone of integrity. Thank you very much. So this is a song for all the good people, all the good people who are part of this family. This is a song for all the good people. We are joined together by this common thread. This is a song for those leaders among us who chase after knowledge with help from their teams. It's your inspiration that leads to translation. We count on your vision, your home and your dreams. So this is a song good people, all the good people.